This is Heart Rhythm TV. We are talking about a featured article in Heart Rhythm. So this manuscript, which is redefining or questioning the blanking period after cryoblation using continuous ECG. And I'm joined by Dan Musat from Valley Health, part of Dr. Mittal's team. Hello. The all-stars on it. Congratulations on this featured manuscript. Thank you very much. Uh, Rod, thank you for the invitation. I'm very humbled and honored to be here, and I'm uh, excited to uh, share with the audience uh, our article. Let's dive into this. ERAF, early recurrence of atrial fibrillation. There's a blanking period. Every single curve you see always has this big box, and then the curve starts. Yes. yes. How did this three-month thing start? So it's a good question, you know, and actually I was wondering myself. And of course, as uh, any uh, electrophysiologist would go to the chat GPT and find out an answer. I the tried. The authoritative source. Of course, right. yes. <laughs> I could not find an answer. It didn't give me an answer. However, I was able to, to find it in a review article where they state that the blanking period started in the era when uh, the surgical uh, AFib uh, was uh, done, ablation was done, and they had like six month blanking period. Mm. And then uh, it translated into the catheter ablation and they said, let's do half of it, let's do three months. And since then, you know, had been widely accepted and universally used as, uh, as a measure, okay, of the uh, post-procedure that, uh, you know, the arrhythmias they occur during this period of time would not count for the future recurrence of atrial fibrillation. However, as you well know, mm-hmm. uh, this comes into question. Well, tell us a little bit about the cohort that you studied to get further into whether this blanking period is really predictive of long-term and the time frame of ERAF. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this cohort. So, we studied uh, 210 patients uh, that with paroxysmal persistent atrial fibrillation who underwent only pulmonary vein isolation using cryoballoon uh, technology. And uh, we had about one third that underwent uh, typical atrial flutter ablation, uh, cavotricuspid flutter, but no other ablations in the left atrium were allowed. And then at the same time uh, with the ablation, either before or at the, at the time of ablation, we implanted in the loop recorder. And we had long-term uh, continuous monitoring. Which is the beauty of this study. It's, yes. It's the implantable loop. You know, I, I admire so much of what Jason Andrade did for a lot of the clinical trials, but we know how robust the data is when you have implantable loops. Which Absolutely. Is, I think, it's so rigorous. And, you know, as uh, many other studies have started questioning the duration of the, the, the blanking period, but with the advantage of the continuous monitoring, mm-hmm. and this is, this is more clear. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we found, we found that, uh, you know, more than 50% of the people would have some uh, atrial fibrillation in the blanking period. And our objective of our study was threefold. One, to evaluate if the timing of the uh, ERAF uh, matter if the burden of air of matter and if the anti medications, medications uh, you know, play a role in uh, defining this uh, air of or uh, long term. So Jake, let's take it one by one then. Yes. Let's hit them right, right by point by point. So what's the typical timing of ERAF? So the typical, you're finding by loop. So we found, we, we actually uh, uh, binned this ERAF in a uh, Three, uh, yeah, in three periods, okay, the, the first month, second month, and third month. We found that most of the ERAF occurs in the, in the first month. However, one-third of the uh, ERAF occurs in, uh, in the month, second, and third months. And we found that any, like an, an atrial fibrillation, uh, 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 an ERAF in the second month or the third month increases by a lot the, right. uh, the recurrence of long-term uh, recurrence. So, in a matter of fact, that if you have an ERAF in the second month, it's twofold. If you have in the third month, it's sixfold increase in, uh, in recurrence. So if you touch zones two and three, yes. the long-term prognosis is obviously less good, less good. So that has a lot of implications as to when we might consider reablating someone if they don't get the result that we're looking for on the first treatment. I agree with you. And I think this should be taken in consideration and uh, of course as you can see from uh, you know okay from uh, we 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 won partially you know the latest guidelines in the european guidelines they actually uh, instated a two month blanking period nowadays right. yeah. which would also be interesting because it changes the calculus of freedom from afib i mean yes. we know that when you implant loops it might almost double the right and, and a lot of what we're seeing with pfa 
Yes. In this day and age, exciting technology, but none of it's with Loop. No. Nope. Right? So we're probably underestimating atrial fibrillation. We know that. Yes. Um, but what's clinically relevant, we understand we know that. We understand that's why burden is there. Yeah. But congratulations on a great paper, because I think this is provocative, and you're not the only group to question the blanking period. There's been other studies to look at this as well that are all thinking that maybe around two months. And my last question for you Mm -hmm. is, do you think the energy source matters? Do we get more pericarditis with RF and cryo? (laughs) Will we get less with PFA? Will it matter if there's energy source? Maybe that's your next project. Yes. So I think you're right, okay? I think uh, the future is bright, okay? We have to to study. We we need more data Mm -hmm. to, to, to find out right now how the PFA plays the role in the, the blanket period plays the role in the, in the PFA uh, era right now. Uh, we know that, uh, as, as you said, you know, RF seems, seems to have more inflammation than the, the cryo. However, previous studies didn't show too, too much difference. But right now with the PFA, which uh, it's likely creating less inflammation, I think it's, uh, it's a history that needs to be written. Much more to come. Yes. Stay curious. Well, congratulations on a great manuscript. Thank you. And everyone can tune in on that one, read it online, or read it when you actually get Heart Rhythm Journal in your office. Featured article of the month with Dan Musat. Mm-hmm.